Hello and welcome to New Breed Film Reviews, episode number 56, I believe it is, right Dave? Yep. Okay, and tonight we have a, a, a different episode. First of all, I just want to apologize. I know it's been a couple weeks since since we've been on as as a whole. It's also been a, a few weeks since I've been on at all. I, You know, it's been a very busy, busy time for us. So much so, in fact, that even this evening, it's only Dave and I. Brian yep. is not on. Gil's not on. Brian bailed um, baby duties. Brian's got baby duties tonight. Gil's um, watching SummerSlam. And Gil's watching fake stuff. Boo, guys so. in underwears. <laughs> but, <laughs> so tonight we're going to have a – it's going to be an interesting episode because, Dave, this is actually the first time that you and I have, have been on only us. Yep. I, you know, I've, I haven't m- – been on an episode without Brian being here. Um, not that I require Brian to be here, but you know, it's just how it how it's worked out. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about. I visited Comic Con, Connecticut Comic Con last weekend. First time I've ever been to a con. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit, and then we're going to get into a little bit of. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but the new Fantastic Four movie it didn't quite do so well. It, uh, it had a budget of $120 million, I believe, and it didn't even make a quarter of that back in the box office. Dude, I don't know the numbers, but I know it did, like, abysmal. It was, like, record yeah. number drops. <laughs> yeah, it was one of the lowest grossing movies of all time. It was, like, the lowest um, comic book movie or superhero movie, whatever you want to call it. Um, it Last I checked, it had a 9% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, which is... That was too low. low. That was too low. I saw it, dude. I don't know if that's... Are you, all right, well, we'll discuss that. We'll discuss that. Um, so let me talk about... Uh, it's actually... It's dropped down to 8% now. Damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How low can um, you go? 8.2 million that movie has grossed. <laughs> mm. That is like... That's like Netflix at its budget right there. It, it, Probably worse. Anyways, we'll we'll get back to that. Mm-hmm. So Comic Con. If let me let me start start with. Oh, first of all, Dave, how are you? I'm doing good, sir. I've been, I've been uh, talking and talking and talking. I have not let you come up. So. No, that's cool, dude. I've been good. Just you know the usual work. And lately, I've been into like making superhero plaques, like a nerd. Uh, uh, that's so awesome, though. Yeah, I'm having fun. I just did a Thor and a Iron Man today. Look pretty cool woodworking so but i've been good dude the usual you know yeah yeah. kind of a hater i'm a little jelly because you got went to comic-con i've never been to one and i left the area i haven't either and i tell you what we didn't i went with my cousin and i didn't i've seen a lot of stuff on comic-con i've always wanted to go to a a comic-con um you know obviously the san diego comic-con is like the mecca of, of all kinds. That's the like that's big one, right? Where you want, yeah. I don't know exactly how long it is, probably like a week long or something like that. But that's where not only the biggest name celebrities are, you know, for all your favorite shows and movies and stuff, but that's where all the theaters, the studios go, and they reveal all the biggest news on, um, you know, superhero movies and, and all things geeky, basically. You know, not just superhero mm-hmm. movies. You got Star Wars, you got... Just all of that stuff. And then there's the whole cosplay thing. <laughs> and it, you laugh. I don't judge. I'm, I'm um, laughing because I was going to say something. It's like, um, you know, like when the hot chicks like dress up as like anime chicks and car- characters. And, and it's like, I'm not hating on cosplay. Like, no, one bit. you can't. And you know what? The first question. Every person told them I was going to Comic-Con was what are you dressing up as and i i want to i want to let everybody know i did not dress up as anything i went as me you went, i went as paul you went as a badass you just be like yes. badass this is my costume right here however next year i will be dressing up because that is the thing to do like everybody like if you have a decent co- even if you have a shitty costume mm-hmm. everybody wants to get their picture taken with you like it's just and it's so let me start with this. So we go in there, and it was at Mohegan Sun Casino, mm-hmm. and they have a convention center. And then, like, outside the convention center is, like, a little lobby before you go in. And we walk in there, and we spent probably 45 minutes just in the lobby alone between 
looking at all the different costumes. They had a couple of, of booths set up. You know, they had uh, Denny O'Neill, who is a is a huge name in the comic book world. He's a great artist. He had a huge booth set up out there, and he's just sitting there drawing up, you know, private like personal sketches and stuff like that. Um, charging an astronomical amount, you know, like sixty dollars, eighty dollars for a for a small sketch, and then it goes up from there. But you know, he's he's Denny O'Neill. Like, if you're a comic book geek, you know the guy, especially a Batman fan. Mm. Um, you know, they had just a bunch of cool stuff. If you're into Doctor Who, they had a TARDIS set up. Um, they had a Batman sixty six Batmobile and Bat Cycle. That's a badass. Um, and then just people walk around in their in their costumes and, and everybody getting pictures. I took a whole crap load of pictures. And the biggest thing that I noticed was, and I probably didn't notice until halfway through the day, I, I'm not good with crowds. I don't like people generally. <laughs> I'm not going to deny that. Like when I'm in a big crowd of people, I get very anxious. And it, it causes me to get angry very easily and stuff like that. And I always want to punch people in the face. <laughs> it wasn't until I had been walking around for probably about four hours that I realized that I at no point felt that way there. Being there was so comfortable around a bunch of other people who were just so comfortable. If you bumped into somebody, even if it was your fault, they always apologized. Mm-hmm. And you apologized back. Like it was just – everyone was so polite and it was just a smooth going thing. And there was probably – I don't know exact numbers. I would say between fifteen and 20,000 people in there. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people. Damn. Yeah. And uh, and I could be wrong. Maybe it was because it was a small place, but it was like shoulder to shoulder. You know, they had some celebrities there that I was really hoping to uh, to get to meet. Dude, did, but any, did uh, Ernie Hudson show up from Ghostbusters? Ernie Hudson? No, unfortunately he did not. Uh. He, was, he didn't announce him until the week before. And if he was there, I would have paid to have my picture taken with him. I would have paid for his autograph probably because anyone who knows me knows I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan. I have Ghostbusters tattoo and all this other stuff. Dude, um, I would have asked him off the record. I would have been like, Winston, what do you think about the female Ghostbusters? Well, we know Bill Murray's okay with it because he's actually going to have a cameo in the in the movie. That's awesome. I, I read, you know, I read uh, what it a few of them were actually. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, more than Murray. Oh. If all of them get on, I'll be cool. Obviously, um, Harold Ramis can't, you know. Yeah, Harold Ramis. R.I.P. Son. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, if if they're all making a cameo, the only reason, the only way I would care if they're making a cameo though is if they're gonna reprise their roles, but they're not supposed to be. <laughs> this is supposed to be a whole other universe, like mm. like the other Ghostbusters never even happened, kind of thing. Uh, I don't know. I, I I don't know how to feel about this movie, dude. I'm so yeah. I'm not really into it. I I don't mm-hmm. I don't know. For the for um, you know for the sake of just seeing it, because like you know like I'm a Ghostbusters fan too. Like I'm probably gonna check it out, but not go to the theaters. I, I'm gonna yeah, watch the I'll shit on wait. it. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. I'll probably do the same. Unfortunately, it makes me sad, but it's the same thing as the Ninja Turtles movie, man. We, we went and saw that, and, yeah, and we knew, but we went and saw it anyways. But yeah, um, true. I was gonna say. Oh, so anyways, so Ernie Hudson didn't show up. Um, however, I did meet. If if any of you guys watched the show Comic Book Men on uh, AMC, it's on after The Walking Dead. I met. Uh, Ming Chen, Mike Zapsik, and Brian Johnson there. Three very cool laid back guys. Brian Johnson is the shit. Like he's he's just an awesome dude. Um he sat there and, you know, we took a picture. It did cost me money. Don't necessarily have to say how much. It wasn't that much for a picture with them. There was other people who were charging twice as much. Um but, you know, he had offered, I sent him a uh thing on Twitter. And he had offered to meet me later for a picture free of charge, unauthorized, like outside of a restaurant there. Mm -hmm. Um, I ended up paying for the picture anyway, so I went back and I was like, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. But he just sat there and just had a conversation with my cousin and I and was just like bullshitting with us. It was awesome. That's cool, dude. (laughs) They had uh, Kevin Conroy, who if you're a a Batman fan from the animated series 
and from any of the Arkham games, it, Arkham he's Night, the voice? Arkham City. Yes, Kevin Conroy's voice, and he was there. That's awesome, dude. Uh, was it weird talking yeah. to him or, like, hearing him talk? It, it was... It was very weird because I was literally just playing the Arkham Knight game like two days before yeah. I went. So I hear his voice and then I see him in person and it's like, what the fuck? Now, we're talking like um, the animated series though where he was like kind of stocky, like the one that was like in the 90s. Yeah. That was yeah, a cool Yeah, the early cartoon. 90s one. Because the Batman Beyond one is uh is Diedrich Bader, who is from like the Drew Carey show and Beverly Hillbillies and, and a few other things. <laughs> um. But, yeah, Kevin Conroy is, like, the most well-known voice for the Batman series, next to Mark Hamill, who, you know, obviously does the Joker. Probably the best. Um, I liked him. I think you said you hated him. Maybe it was you or it was Gil, but I like Peter Weller. He's the guy who played Robocop back in the 80s. He voiced Batman in, um, I think, The Dark Knight Returns, the animated movie. He He did a pretty good job. I th- oh, really? It wasn't Conroy who did that one? No, not in the Dark Knight one. I think it's called the Dark Knight Returns, where he's like older yeah, and retired. It, it's um, Yeah, it's based off the um, Frank Miller comic book, yeah. and I've been wanting to watch it for a Dude, while. I love awesome. the comic book. There, it's actually one of like the most revered comics, Batman comics ever, because it's like so dark and just... Yeah, it, it's, um, it's freaking awesome, dude. I definitely recommend it. So he was there. Um, the kid who played Data from the Goonies and um, Short Round from Indiana Jones. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, dude. You s- he was there, except obviously he wasn't a kid. He's in his 40s now or 50s or whatever, 40s. He looks way different. And uh, Yeah, yeah. He sounds, he sounds the same. He's still got you know a thick Asian accent, and it's like high pitch. He's short. He's probably like five feet tall. <laughs> Yo, dude. Um. But he wanted like forty dollars, or he might want like twenty dollars for a picture and like forty dollars for an autograph or something like that. And I was just like, you know what? Damn. Like it's cool seeing him. If he still looked like he did when he was, you know, ten years old when he did these movies, mm-hmm. absolutely, <clears throat> I would, I would do so that. So you were hoping, but he's a grown up now. It's not the same. I know. I knew he wasn't gonna obviously look like that. You were hoping he had um, that Gary Coleman syndrome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that's that's just how I picture him. Like you can see the pictures of him online and stuff, and you're like, oh, that's what I'm gonna go see. But in your mind, you're like, dude, I'm, I'm, it's still this guy, but it's not. So it wasn't worth it. Um, but unfortunately, with Ernie Hudson, they made the announcement like early on that he wasn't able to get down from New York City. So they, in his defense, they did have 95 shut down for a couple hours, mm. um, both directions because of a bad accident. Yeah. So that sucks, dude. Um, yeah, but you know, I got I got some artwork that I got for a really good price. Um, custom artwork, you know, they were prints. So like the the woman who made them, she had a bunch of copies of them, but it was still all her original work. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, eleven by seventeen prints, and I'm gonna post them up on the Twitter page. I might have already actually done it. They're beautiful ones of uh, one's a picture of the Joker, and he's kind of like holding. Batman in like a yo-yo rock the cradle kind of thing. Yeah. And then another one is like a noirish Ninja Turtles animated kind of thing. They're both badass and I paid ten dollars for both prints. And other booths were selling things similar for like sixty bucks a piece mm. for their own versions of stuff like this. So Dude, I'm looking at a short round right now, present day, he's forty four. Yeah, Jonathan K. Kwan, K. Kwan something, like, something that. like that. Yeah. Jonathan K. Kwan. Yeah. I, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. He looks a lot different, man. He yeah. looks the same, but like different. His eyebrows are like gray. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. But it, it's funny because I've been watching this Comic Con like notices for for months and like seeing all these pictures, and then you get there and you're like, these are like celebrities in person. You're you're talking to them, shaking your hands. And that's when you realize that celebrities are just normal people. Yeah. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? They're Z grade celebrities, don't get me wrong. It's not Brad Pitt that's up there. It's but it's still just like you're talking to them, they're your height, they're your build, they're you know, they're having a conversation with you like normal people. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's really easy to forget when you're watching them on T V or in the movies that they're literally just people who are doing a job. Yeah. And People just happen to know who they are. A lot of them don't even want to be put on a pedestal, dude. Like, 
It makes right. them feel awkward, you know. They just they just yeah. want to be viewed as like regular Joes, you know, and just shoot the shit. And you could tell just by talking to them that that's how it was. Like a lot of these comic book artists that were there, they're big names, you know, and and some of them, like they acted like it, you know, they did. A lot yeah. of them were just like they would just snub you. Dude, I met but some I met ones. some jerks, man. I, I got a I got a story now to cut you off. Um, oh, you, man. you know who, uh, Chuck Zito is. Yeah. Freaking, uh, I believe he was like a former Hells Angels leader. He was on the uh, HBO show Oz, and you know he. Uh, this is more for the people listening. Um, he was in Sons of Anarchy. Big old Jack Italian dude, martial artist. Um, not to cut you off, Paul. We'll go right back. Don't forget. But yeah, man, go for it. um, I was at Mohegan, <clears throat> and freaking Chuck Zito was eating in the same restaurant I was at and I saw him and spotted him. I don't think people really recognized him or they just terrified and wanted to leave him alone. One of the two. And I was like, man, I gotta, I can't just let this slip. So like I just manned up and I, I let him finish his food. I didn't disrupt him while he was like eating. Cause that shit's like rude to me. <clears throat> and when he finished, got up, got up, kind of got behind him a little bit and i was like excuse me i was like super polite i was like mr zito <laughs> uh, dude i uh, my approach is like just like impeccable like i was like i'm a huge fan right. i just threw it out there i was like i'm a huge fan loved you on oz da, 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 da. you know sorry to bother but like can i get a picture with you and um wicked cool dude wicked he was like yeah man like sure like whatever fucking uh threw his arm over me and stuff like you know waited took a couple of pictures shook my hand you know uh bullshit for like a little bit because he was on a go and um very cool dude man like super approachable but he he's a badass you know so i was kind of yeah. like Ugh. that's how it was talking to these guys man they're just they're so laid back and you would think that with them going to because a lot of them it's what they do they just run the con circuit they go to cons in every state and, and all this like every week they're a different one that's how a lot of them make their money because some of them aren't doing work anymore some of them are old actors um so you would think that they would have been burnt out from it but a lot of them just are just having a good time mm -hmm. um one more person who was there and i'll, I'll get off the comic con thing pretty soon until, unless you have questions for me specifically on it but uh jerry the king lawler was there Oh shit! And anybody who's from the WWF or a fan of WWF, which I was up until about the age of fourteen, know who Jerry the King Lawler so is. So basically, when uh, you when you grew up and you realized that it was yeah. just trash, <laughs> just joking. And I was not, messing with Gil. Not only was he there, no, <laughs> <laughs> but not only was he there signing autographs, but he also had his own artwork there. He's a damn good artist, and he was a really nice dude. Um, I didn't like my cousin, I saw him and, and we didn't really talk to him, but I was sitting like near him when he was talking to somebody else and you could just hear him talking to like kids and stuff like that. And the guy like legit, it was just like a nice dude. And, uh, and it's always nice to see, especially somebody that big. Cause of everybody there, I would think that he was probably as far as, um, like visual personalities go. He was probably one of the bigger names. Dude, Lawler, there. he's been around for like decades, man. He's like decades, man. He was a wrestler and an announcer, and then he had a heart attack, and then he came yeah. back. He's well respected in that community, and he he's world famous. He's world famous, you know. Absolutely, <clears throat> one of the probably one of the bigger names in the wrestling community because of not only his wrestling career but also his his announcing career. You know, when I was watching wrestling. It was him and JR were like the two mm -hmm. wrestling announcers. So that was someone who I pretty much grew up every week, Monday Night Raw and then all that other stuff. Dude, watching. WCW, so. Thunder, Nitro. I used to flip between uh, uh, Raw and uh, Nitro on Mondays. Gun, I used to yep. watch him. And um, my era, like I really loved when – well, I grew up with the uh, Hulk Hogan and Macho Man era and all that, Ultimate Warrior, but – yeah. Razor yeah, Ramon dude, Razor Ramon was the that. shit, but um, yep. I could go way back too to the Killer Bees, Demolition, um, the Rockers. Yeah, well, you're you're a couple years yeah, older. Yeah. Than me. Not too much older, but you're yeah. a couple years, so you probably have more than '80s mm -hmm. wrestlers. More recollection, in, yeah. In your mind. Um, but uh, oh yeah, but dude, like I love the Attitude Era, like with Stone Cold, The Rock. Um, yeah, yeah, 
The Rock. Dude, The Rock shit, was. Man. He still is. He's right? probably the greatest of all time, um, besides Stone Cold, man. Like, uh, they, you know, he was amazing on the mic too. Really entertaining. Yeah. All them Bret Michaels, Triple H, yep. you know, yep. all of them guys, man. Owen Hart, Bret Hart. I didn't like either of the Hearts, but you know, I, Owen I Hart, like R.I.P. Because that's fucked yeah, up. Yeah, I like to him. Bret Hart. It was tragic what happened to Owen, man. And like the story with him, <clears throat> not to go on a side rant, but he didn't want to do the stunt. Like he had like a bad feeling right. about it, and you know, the rumor out there is like he kind of was like pressured to do it. Like his job was on a line, and that's why like, well, Bret Hart. Vince McMahon has that reputation of being that that dude who who would do something yeah. like that and pressure someone into shit. Mm-hmm. So he's a ruthless businessman, yeah. you know. But he's I he's mean, I, rich, I guess somebody so. like forgot to like fully lock him in, and um, you know, yeah, unfortunate thing. There's been a few horrific things, dude, and rest. And the there rain. is. I read a lot of those stories like on Facebook. You know, they have like those little things like that you might be interested in. It's like a news story from advertisements and stuff, and you go through and read them, and you, yeah. yeah, it sucks. Um. So, anyways, let's get off that topic. Bro. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Comic Con, dude. Overall, like, uh, was it what you expected, and you enjoyed yourself? I I had a blast. I uh, can't wait to go to the next one. There is one in Rhode Island coming up in a couple of weeks actually like two mm-hmm. months but i unfortunately will not have the money to go because i'm going yeah. on a vacation in november so um but next year for sure i'm going to hit several cons and i will one day go to the san diego mm-hmm. comic con um you know it, it wasn't a lot this one didn't cost me a lot of money my ticket was 25 bucks um and then i spent about 35 dollars there and I could have easily spent a lot more, yeah. um, but with what I got, I'm very happy with what I spent. That's cool, dude. You know? I want to I wanna definitely uh, check one out. Um, you know, I was more into comics back in the day, but I do love, you know, I love superhero stuff like Marvel, DC. So um, I definitely would have fun and meeting uh, the little mini celebrities there, you know, B level, C level, whatever they are. Um, I would love to meet some of the Walking Dead cast. Because I, I noticed they, they usually have them. Yeah, there was actually just a Walker Stalker Con in Best, uh, Best mm-hmm. Boston over this weekend, um, which is like a uh, con dedicated to Walking Dead. Yeah, that would be so, cool, dude. It's a pretty big deal. I would will, I will love to check that out. So cool, man. It sounds like you had a freaking a blast, man. I, I may have missed this part. Yeah. You went by yourself? Uh, oh, my okay, cousin went cousin with me. Was. Brian was actually originally supposed to, uh, and then it turns out that schedules were com- conflicted. He was up in a, he was on vacation. I don't have to say where he went, but he was on vacation mm-hmm. for a week. So he came back the day of the con and it was like, obviously he's not going to want to come home from vacation with, right. you know, his wife and his baby and then just leave yeah, right yeah. away. So I got you. It's cool, man. Um, anything else on Comic Con? Yeah. No, I, I just uh, if you get the chance, go. You know, um, especially if you're into any kind of superheroes, anything geeky in general. Um, it's just a really good time. If you if you just like movies, you know, it might not necessarily be your thing. You do have to have some kind of a geek factor to you. Otherwise, you probably won't get most of it. Like my cousin, he, he enjoyed it, um, but I know there was a lot of stuff there that he just necessarily didn't know about because he's not really a comic book guy so Mm -hmm. but he had a good time too so i'm trying not to uh crunch in the mic and for the people listening i mean some there's a mute button i mean some chocolate covered pretzel so good and these are like um this is just like chocolate crack right now like it's it's great yeah um love these things i could eat like a whole bag (laughs) anyway so for the second part of our show, Paul, we're going to talk about the the reason why some of these like superhero flicks fail, and like you know, um, yeah, the topic came up because of like the the super bomb, you know, that Fantastic Four was, and I I knew that shit was going to be terrible, dude. Like we actually called it like way back, you know, it was just uh, 
I, and for that movie in particular, I saw it. I, I reviewed it for this podcast. <clears throat> so I'm not going to go too crazy into it, but it wasn't as bad as like people made it made it out to be and like Rotten Tomatoes, but it was definitely a disappointment. I don't know, man. It's not just Rotten Tomatoes, though. Like, if it was just them, I'd be like, all right, people are kind of just being dicks at this point. But IMDb rates it at 3.9 yeah. out of 10. Metacritic's got it at 27%. So, <laughs> it, who, who are the people? In the biggest, in the biggest who's the 9% is, that actually liked the movie? They must be like mentally, like, defi- like something's know. wrong with them. Like, you know? Here's the general consensus on it, and I haven't seen the movie, so it's it's tough for me to speak directly on it, but I've heard a lot of different reviews so far. And what most people are saying is that it actually starts off kind of strong, and then the story just <laughs> flatlines, and then there's no character development. There's no feeling of, of family between, you know, Johnny Storm and his sister. Dude, casting and Michael B. Jordan as Johnny Storm was just a mistake, just flat out. It was flat a mistake. Out. And it's and and I'm gonna go out and say this, and it's not a racist thing. It's because he's black. It's it Whoa. sounds racist, but it's not. Whoa! It's I don't, edit this I, out. Yeah, I don't no, care. I'm just <laughs> I no, no, I get you, dude. No, no, no. I I kept it real it's, too. It it's been the biggest criticism. It's the biggest criticism is you changed a character's backstory. Dude, completely. I'll be honest. You, go, go ahead. I'm gonna cut you off. Yeah, I was just gonna say, you know. I get it. I don't know. I don't have any issues with that particular type mm-hmm. of situation if the comic books followed in that suit. But when you go in and you completely change the backstory to make the movie more interesting or to to get somebody because it's to be progressive. Johnny Trank or whatever it's the guy's to be new name. age. Like let's just make him black just because it it makes no sense. It changes the origins. Um, I would I will be equally upset if they take Blade and make him Hispanic or Chinese. Like I will be like pissed. Like you can't fuck with Blade. Yeah. Like Blade is black and that's that. Like it just screws right. shit up. And you know they got away with it with uh, Sam Jackson as Nick Fury, which was awesome. Like I was hating on that at first, and he pulled it off. But I still I would have preferred like the actual. But he is more secondary <clears throat> than primary. As opposed to um, yeah. Johnny Storm, who is a main, main character. He's part of the Fantastic Four. Dude, but yes, Nick Fury, Nick Fury might be part of the Avengers. He's badass, but... dude. He's been around for a long time, yeah. and uh, it's a you know it's a love character, kind of like the Punisher. And I mean, I was kind of bugged with that too, but I got over it because he did such a good job. Um, I will say this: the director did ask Stan Lee's permission mm-hmm. to. Well, make Stan Lee, Johnny's I mean, black. he would probably come off wrong if he's like, no, you know, because then everybody wants to throw like the race right. card, like that's just how it is in this day and age. You can't have an opinion on something, and you can't disagree without being racist or sexist or something like that. It's like I hate Ghostbusters, the female cast. I hate it because it's women. And not because they can't mm-hmm. handle the role is because I grew up with the male cast and that's how I envision Ghostbusters like dudes. And that's exactly how is it Ghostbusters without Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, Harold <laughs> Ramis, Ernie Hudson? Like, how is that? Yeah. How is it um, not Ghostbusters or how is it Ghostbusters? Yeah. So? And then let's take like uh, let's take like Aeon Flux or something like Charlie Theron played that character or like Kill Bill. Yes. Yeah, um, any female uh, oh, Tomb Raider, Lara Croft. I I would never want that change. Like, don't make it a dude. Don't make it Larry Croft. Like, leave it Laura. Like, I'll be I'll be upset. <laughs> like, so it's not a sexist thing. It's like just the origins thing. That's how it was written. Leave it alone. Exactly, it's the origins thing. So, so please, if if you haven't shut it off already because of what I just said. <laughs> Don't think that I'm a racist. Don't think that I'm like, oh, black people have no position in Hollywood because that is the opposite of the truth. Michael B. He's Jordan awesome. was great in Chronicle. That was a good movie. Food and that Station. was this director's first movie. And and I just think that he wasn't quite ready to take on – the director wasn't ready to take on a movie like this, one that's already historically failed twice yeah. – 
twice as a Dude, movie. But the, Actually, technically three times because there, there was, was an older Fantastic one. Fantastic Fours in the last one, and then there was one like yeah, old, it's on YouTube one, actually. Um, it was like scrapped, yeah. and um, dude, another main thing is <clears throat> you you can't take, and this is not like a spoiler. Um, but I mean, you can see this from the trailers. Doctor Doom looked like shit. He looked like a yes. melted gray crayon. Like, give me a fucking break. Like, it's Doctor Doom. He's like ranked number. He's within the top ten of greatest villains of all time. Like, when Doom shows up, shit is just fucked and it takes like whole teams to stop him he's an iconic villain what's wrong with a green cloak hood with gold medallions and a badass silver iron man suit why the why couldn't you just make doom like dr doom no we have to be new age and make him a melted crayola crayon just fucked it up dude so that brings me into the question not just with Fantastic Four, but why is it that some superhero movies work, some superhero movies are just huge and are, are awesome, you know, i.e. Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, Iron Man movies, um, Dark Knight <clears throat> movies, upcoming, hopefully, Batman v Superman movie. I could answer that. You know, why is it that those work, but movies like the original Daredevil, um, and Green Lantern and all these other movies don't. I got an answer for that, dude. My own opinion. My right. my thought on that is like without overcomplicating it. Like I don't think it's the content that's hard to put on screen. Because if people say, "Oh, Fantastic Four is hard to do," okay, you got Vision, you got the Hulk on screen, you got all these like weird ass characters they pull off, and why can't they do like a big rock guy and a flame dude? It's not that. Um, it's, it, it, it goes along also with like Punisher and Ghost Rider and Daredevil. It, the, oh, right. The bottom line, shitty writing, shitty directing. Like they, they, they cannot capture the is. vibe correctly. They're out of tune with the characters. They don't do their research and they try to make a quick buck with like low quality. That That's it. Like, that's my view. You know, you know what else ha- seems to be a, a theme with this? A lot of these are secondary studios who are who happen to have the rights to these characters. So um, I think the exception to the rule is the X Men franchise, which is owned by Fox, if yep. I remember correctly, and they have what like thirteen movies out. Granted, they're not all good movies. Some of them are. I I really enjoy like the X Men franchise. Some people may disagree with me. I know um, probably present company included. On some of those movies, I haven't seen every single one of the X Men movies, but the ones I have seen, I really enjoyed. <clears throat> but it just seems to me the movies that aren't directly tied in with the comic book company. So Marvel's movies, Guardians of the Galaxy, the Avengers movies, Iron Man, like those are all coming directly from the source, if you will. And they just seem to have a better grasp on how it should be written, so they find the right writers. These other studios, they might know good writers, but they might not fully understand the uh, the concept in the the audience that they should be targeting with these movies. <clears throat> and so, dude, they don't want to put the work in, man. It's it's a lethal. They don't want to put the work in. They don't want to. The, what they need to do is they need to hire writers that are that are fans, because like if you're a fan of something. You're going to right. respect the content and want to put out the best quality. You know what I mean? Like, you're not just going to be like, oh, I don't give a shit yeah. about the material and I'm going to write like a Michael Bay movie. Like, you know, that's just like no substance, just like flash and corny jokes and one liners. And that's a Fantastic Four was. It was just in bad casting, bad writing, bad direction, meh CGI. The truth is, real fans, real fans of people who who is the core demographic, the people who are going to go see this movie don't care about flashiness. They just want to see their favorite characters, the ones that they've been reading their entire lives in these, in these comic books and these graphic novels, whatever they want to see that come to life. It does not have to be grandiose. It does not have to be super flashy. Just get a good story, include the villains and make them look like the characters. 
You know what? From what I've seen, they've made the thing look like he does in the he comic was, books. I, so you can't yeah, use that. As I wasn't an cool with the casting. I, I actually really liked Michael Chiklis as the thing from the other two movies that didn't do well. He, did he was good. It. He was a his good costume choice for looked the shit. Role. Yeah, it's kind of like rubber costume. Yeah, well, how do you have vinyl yeah. look like? <laughs> how, how do you have it look like it, stone? It's like, dude, when I saw that, I was like, uh, you know, 1985 called. Like, you know, they want the, their rubber suits back from Ninja Turtles. Like, you know what I mean? They use that kind of technology. Which were actually well, they were pretty cool. awesome <laughs> costumes, if you ask me. <laughs> like, I would be okay with them making another Ninja Turtles movie well, using yeah, those Yeah, but with better, costumes. better costumes, though. A little more, you know. New Age. Yeah, it's better than CG. It is. Uh, unless if it's like, you know, Hulk CG. Like, if they do it real good quality, but... Um, yeah. The I'm thing, dude, crazy. he actually looked good. The main gripe I had with him is... And I guess it's kind of a spoiler, but not a huge one. He still had, like, a human sissy voice. Like, it was like the young kid's voice with a giant rock body. And it's like, why? why? Uh, so that, Dude, it just did it not match. It was stupid. It's like, he's supposed to have like a gruff, big guy, like rumbly voice. He's a giant rock dude. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it was just a mess. So can I ask you? Go ahead, dude. So what about, maybe casting is not so much an issue, but what about the fact that you have people who have played other superhero roles in the past, for example, Affleck as Daredevil, Ryan Reynolds as uh Which I liked. Green Lantern. I liked him as Green Lantern. And now, and now they're coming back as different roles. Um, or even, even dare I say it, Will Smith as Hancock coming back as, uh, as what's I don't his even face know there. His name. Don't even care, uh, dude. Dead shot, I, I think. I don't remember. But, yeah, that sounds right. Um, does that affect how you view these these actors? Mm -hmm. I know you love Ryan Reynolds, and and Affleck's a great actor. Um, apparently, not so good at, at staying faithful to his wife. Although I see, dude, his is that legit? Like nanny, he really so. banged his nanny? Yeah, that's you know all what. Real. I, hey, I don't condone it. That's like a D-bag move. But I gave him a lot more respect than Arnold. Like, Arnold's mistress, dude, I don't even understand that. <laughs> like, why, Arnie? Like, <laughs> come on, dude. Standards. You got to raise them a little bit. Especially if you're going to cheat on Maria Shriver. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. You got it made. Kennedy. Anywho. He messed that up. But but he's Arnie. He's, he's like, anyways. what, he's worth really half a billion or something? Yeah. That's my Something dude. Ridiculous. Although he might have lost it when he was a I forgive him. Um, so, is that going to affect how you view these guys um, in their new roles? No, dude, because Green Lantern, the movie was a letdown, but I didn't think that was as bad as people made it out to seem. It was watchable, but it was it was disappointing because Green Lantern is pretty badass and he's iconic, you know. He may not be equal to Superman as far as, like, world known, but he's up there, dude. He's, like, Justice League and very powerful. He's a cool character. Yeah, but he's got to recharge his, his ring every once in a while. <clears> he he does, man. But, but what superhero... Uh, superheroes have to have some kind of weakness. You know what I mean? Like, Of course. They, have they to all be do. Otherwise, it, it, why right. would they lose? Why would they ever lose right, right. battles? And they always have to. But so that's I liked point, him but. as Green Lantern. I thought he was funny. I thought he nailed it. He had a good look for uh, Hal Jordan. Um, the movie just sucked. And him as Deadpool, I, I don't even like link him, dude. And the same thing with like Affleck. I blame the director and the writer, you know, for Daredevil. It's the same thing with the Punisher movies. Like yeah. they can't really do them right, and they didn't do Ghost Rider right. They didn't do Wolverine right. Uh, X Men movies are watered down. It's it's the writing, man. You know. Yeah. <clears throat> are you excited for De uh, Deadpool? Uh, not not no. at all, dude. Not at all. I don't. I don't. No, I didn't like the trailer. I don't. Coming from a guy who swears a lot, 
who cusses a lot. I don't necessarily care much for a comic book character who they're bringing to life who in the trailer drops F-bombs like every other word. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird thing for me to see. Um, yeah. Because comic books are generally geared towards a younger audience. And even though I have no problem swearing, I don't think that it's good to have... You know kids are going to be going to see this movie. Their parents are going to be taking them because they just think it's a Marvel movie or DC movie. I don't remember who who makes it. And they're going to be like, oh, this is going to be Guardians of the it's Galaxy. Marvel, and then it's not going to be that. So, um... E- I, dude, Deadpool. Yeah, I, I don't know. I from didn't. the jump, I, like I, I knew a little bit about Deadpool as far as like, uh, you know, like he's from like the Weapon X program. He heals. He's an assassin. He's disfigured. He cracks jokes. He breaks. What is it called? The fourth wall or something like that. That like Joker does it. Yeah, which is when you talk. Yeah, you to talk the to the writers. That's the fourth. Call. And he's one of the few that understands he's a comic character which is kind of funny um but i wasn't excited about it and then it's kind of winning me over but i'm still not souped i'm not gonna be like oh i'm gonna go see it right away we'll see what happens right it's not batman dude superman batman versus superman i am extremely excited about that like that's my go-to movie for the future I'm all over that shit. No, I hope it. I hope it is, is as good as it looks. I hope it. I mean, they're taking a year longer than they said they were going to take to put this out, so it better be damn good. Because um, we we're supposed Dude, to be seeing it. Right I, uh, now. I read a lot um, of like different articles on it, and I spoiled some things for myself that I'm not going to talk about on the podcast. Well, I don't want to ruin it for people, but. Dude, like, epic. It's gonna be epic. Like, just what they're trying to add into it, and if they, if these things that I read are factual, which I'm pretty sure they are, because I seen, like, who was on the set. Crazy, dude. Absolutely bonkers. It's gonna be, like, I can't wait. It's gonna blow Avengers 2 out the water. That, that's my view on it. Still haven't seen that. I gotta see that. It was good, dude. I, I find the first one better. But it was definitely it was a good yeah. movie. It was fun. Yeah, but you went and saw that around the same time you saw Mad yeah, Max. Right? A week apart. So it's hard to Yeah. Brian said when he watched he watched Avengers mm-hmm. after he watched Mad Max and he's like it wasn't really a fair thing. But to me, and and I've said this I don't know if I've said this on the podcast, Mad Max was like up and down for me. Mm-hmm. It seemed to start very slow and then like I just didn't get it. It just it was like a long car chase. It was my, This is my initial thought on it. Tom Hardy doesn't need to be in this movie. It's a long car chase where they go to one spot. They get everybody over there, and then they turn around and they're like, okay, now let's get back to the base before they get there so we can take over. Oh, spoilers, sorry. Um, and I was like, all this for more spoilers. You know what I nope. think the issue was, then, though, Paul? Like, um... Is that like? Hold on, let me let me finish my mini review and then I'll I'll see if you still have the same thing. And then I went back and thought about it after Brian was like, "Dude, you're crazy." And I thought about the movie for what it was, special effects, um, but not not necessarily CGI because it was like all practical and just action and all that. And I realized it was an awesome movie. Tom Hardy did need to be in this movie. <clears throat> and, I mean, you know what my favorite part about that movie was? The dudes on the giant pole yeah, swinging true. back and forth. And then you got the guy who's just hanging there with the yeah. guitar, and it's just like... It was Conan so O'Brien weird, but did a parody yeah, a for the people movie. listening. Go to YouTube and check out the Conan O'Brien Mad Max Fury Road parody. It's fucking funny. Um, no, Paul, I think you would have enjoyed... Now, this is like if you if you've seen the original Mad Max movies, like the three of them with Mel Gibson, um, those movies are all like based on car chases. Like that's like the main theme of like each movie. It's like a staple of them. So like 
that would have made sense to you because everybody who like saw the originals, like you know, you were gonna see just a big ass car chase with the new one. So it's like not a surprise, and it's like the theme of it. It's it's weird, hard to explain, but there's always some kind of big epic final chase, and um, I think you would appreciate it more if you would have saw the first three. You know, with Mel Gibson. Um, it was, the new one is like some of the greatest, probably the most action-packed movie I've ever seen. Once it gets going, um, I'm definitely gonna own it. Want to? I want to see the special features on it. And uh, I, I. Oh yeah, I'll probably buy it just yeah. for the special features. Alone. I thought it was pretty epic, dude. But <clears throat> anyway, back on the superhero thing. So I, I you know, I answered your question. Yes. Um, and um, I don't know how much more you want to get into this, but. I don't know if you want to wrap up soon, but like my response was writing and directing. And what do you think the the overall reason like these movies are not these movies are failures? I I couldn't agree more. I mean, these guys they're getting the budget. They're they're getting everything they need. They're getting the support of the studios. I don't think it's a cast issue so much. I mean, Fantastic Four being the exception there, I do think that was a casting issue as, as much as it was a writing issue. Um, giving a director who's inexperienced more control than he should have had over that movie. Um, way too big of a budget for someone who, who just has never yeah. done a big movie. Um, that was, I think, the downfall of that. And I haven't seen it just from the summarization that I've seen from most people is, is where I come up with that conclusion from. Now, as far as the other movies go, I think generally you're right. I think it's, it's just realistically writing and directing because <clears throat> you can't blame the special effects unless they're going to the wrong place for their special effects, you know, but I think Jurassic Park had, probably half the budget that some of these superhero movies have had over the years and look at it today 20 what 20 years 22 years later and it still stands up 100 percent with their special effects yeah and that was groundbreaking special effects that was like in its like premature like still just just coming out of its shell special effects and these movies now uh, are over the top. You can't blame that. It's all about the writing. If you don't have a good story, if you don't have a way to keep the audience tied in, you can only have so much action involved in a movie before people are like, dude, I just don't give a shit anymore. Give me – you can't have a good movie without an emotion, emotionally compelling mm-hmm. story behind it. It just doesn't exist. Yeah, it, it's all it it's all on the writing, man. And it's like – um. When you work for a company and the big wigs, the corporate guys come up with these, they implement these dumbass ideas and the ground level guys are like, what is this? This is not going to work because they're like in the field and uh, these guys are like out of touch with, you know, uh, what to do and like what's going on. And it's like these executives, man, they're not like movie fans. They just want to make a quick turnaround and a quick buck and they just like. You know, you got you got to respect yep. the fans, their intelligence and the content and put put some effort, man, put some quality out there. Because like like with Fantastic Four, you know, word of mouth is like huge. And and, you know, um, the people who were going to flock to see it immediately were like obviously like comic nerds, like comic fans. And they were upset when they started seeing stuff, you know, regarding the movie, like the the changes and there was a bad buzz right there. So like that branches off into the casual fans and like, Oh, it's going to suck. It's going to suck. And then that negative cloud is there. And then you get what you have, what happened, you know, 9% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> but I do want to throw something out here. Josh Trank, who is the director of Fantastic Four, he did uh, release a tweet, you know, the night that the movie debuted and I don't know what the exact tweet was. I'm sure you can find it if you look it up online. It was very popular that he did this. Um, he has since taken it down, but he had mentioned, I wish you could see the movie that I had made like a year ago or something along those lines. Like this isn't the movie that I had made. And basically <clears throat> alluding to the fact that the studio 
like changed it so much. And my, but with, it piques my curiosity on that is, did he say that to cover his own ass? Because if if he did, then like he's done anyway. So like no studio is gonna hire him anymore if he if he released that kind of information. Like you, he burned all of his bridges by doing that. Or did he say that like out of legitimacy? Like, hey, I made a movie. It was actually pretty good, and the studio decided that you guys should see something else. If that's the case, I feel like he probably should have come out sooner than the day it actually debuted, after it debuted and already started to tank. I think he was covering his ass. Um, <clears throat> it's just, but I understand it must be frustrating because, like, and I'm pretty sure this happens. I'm sure you have, like, a vision, and then, again, the guys with the money step in and say, no, no, we don't want that. It sounds dumb. And they just fuck your movie up. Yeah. Like, so I, I definitely think... Um, I gonna I give him the benefit of the doubt as far as like I'm like fifty fifty on that. Like, you know, um we weren't there, so you know, it, it maybe it is an unfortunate thing where they screwed the movie up, you know? The people behind a curtain. You know? But Yeah. Um you got anything else, dude, or no, man, right. I'm uh, I'm good. So I think that was a solid episode, man. We covered some interesting stuff, and um, that wraps up 56. And hopefully, you know, we're back next Sunday with the full crew. Brian on here, maybe get Gil on here. Um, midweek, maybe we'll get a couple of reviews in there, random movies. But that's all I got, dude. Mm-hmm. I do, I do want to say this. I would like in the future to do a. Um, in the not so distant future, like a fairly soon um, episode, I would like to do a Q and A episode with with our fans. I'd like to have them send in questions via email, via Twitter. I do know we are starting to get more followers on Twitter. We're starting to talk to more people, so I'd like, or even our Facebook page, like send us questions. Anything you guys want to know about? First our question. Views are on first a, question. Dude's gonna film. be like, <laughs> gonna be like, why? Is Paul racist? <laughs> <laughs> well, why doesn't he like Quentin Tarantino? Yeah, no. Any any questions you want? Um, for me, nothing is off the table. I'll I'll yeah. answer any question you guys want for the most part, as long as it's within yeah. FCC standards. Why is Dave Fuck on the, the show? FCC. He's retarded. That's probably the second. If Paul doesn't, if Paul is so racist, why is he friends with a Hispanic true, man? True. True. You know, I back them all. Stuff like that. No, but seriously, any questions about movies that you or about our crew, like you know, what films we might have done, what what else we might do in the quote unquote film industry? Because even though we're not professionals, we do partake in other activities involving film, and I like to discuss yeah, that kind of stuff. But I just need we're to know uh, an low audience level for actors. It. We've done tons of shorts. We were aspiring writers. Uh, Brian is a, an aspiring director. He would like to go to Sundance. I mean, so we're like, we're not just like movie review guys. Like we're, we're heavy into films, like in, in different aspects. I have like three scripts in the process mm-hmm. right now being written. So hopefully one will be soon, would be done within the next two weeks and I'll be submitting it hopefully to some people in Hollywood. We'll see how that goes. And if that does happen, then I will, uh, you know, I'll, you guys will get kind of like a documentary on the whole process because that would be awesome. That would be kind of cool, dude. I want a Lambo. So, Just saying. Right. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Writers don't make that much money. All right, dude. Uh, so, early work hey, day tomorrow for good me. Night. So, uh, yeah, me too. Me too, at sir. 6 a.m. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Uh, hit All us right. up on um, New Beat Film Reviews 2014 at Gmail. Hit us up on our Twitter, which is what, Paul? At Newbury Film. At Newbury Film. Um, At Newbury su- Film. Subscribe. Yep. Thank you for listening. Thanks for supporting us. And uh, check you for 57. All right. Later, dude. Yep. See you next week.